Hello everyone, let us learn the anatomy of pituitary gland. Structurally, pituitary gland is very tiny, but functionally this is the most important endocrine gland in our body. Because the hormones of the pituitary gland got influence on activities of other endocrine glands. Hence this gland is also called as master endocrine gland. Where actually the pituitary gland is located? The pituitary gland is located in a depression called as hypophyseal fossa or pituitary fossa. So this hypophyseal fossa or pituitary fossa is a depression in the body of sphenoid bone. This part is also called as cella tarsica. So because of this particular location, the pituitary gland is also called as hypophysis cerebrae. Hypo means below. Physis means growth. So the pituitary gland is something like a tiny growth from the base portion of the brain that is from the below portion or inferior aspect of the brain. So that's why this is also called as hypophysis cerebrae. And this tiny gland is closely related to the sphenoidal air sinus. Just below the pituitary gland we have the sphenoidal air sinus that is within the body of sphenoid. And another structure closely related is the optic chiasma. Size wise the pituitary gland is very small, something like a tiny pea and it weighs around 0.5 gram only and its diameter is around 8 into 12 millimeter. So that much tiny is the pituitary gland but functionally it is very important. What is pituitary stalk? This is also called as infundibulum. The pituitary stalk is the connection of pituitary gland to the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland is connected by a stem like structure called as pituitary stalk. And within the pituitary stalk we have blood vessels and the neurons which are connecting various parts of the pituitary gland to the hypothalamus. So those structures we will explain shortly under the parts of pituitary gland. What are the parts of pituitary gland? Pituitary gland consists of two main parts, anterior pituitary gland and the posterior pituitary gland. Anterior pituitary part is also called as adenohypophysis and the posterior pituitary gland is also called as neurohypophysis. So what we see behind is posterior and what we see here in front is anterior. Adenohypophysis and neurohypophysis. Let us explain each parts in detail, both anterior pituitary gland and posterior pituitary gland. Anterior lobe consists or anterior pituitary consists of three parts: anterior lobe, intermediate lobe, and tuberal lobe. So in between anterior lobe and parts intermediate, there is a cleft called as inter intraglandular cleft. But the posterior pituitary is called as neurohypophysis. The posterior pituitary is called as neurohypophysis because this part shows more or less similarity with the neuronal structures and histologically this consists of neuronal processes, axonal process and neuroglial cells. And this posterior pituitary also is connected to the hypothalamus via pituitary stalk or infantibulum. In fact, Posterior pituitary gland does not secrete any hormone but simply the storage of the hormones are happening. These hormones are liberated from the hypothalamus. Let's learn the blood supply to the pituitary gland. Being an endocrine gland, pituitary gland shows rich vascularity because the hormones of the pituitary gland have to be liberated directly to the bloodstream and circulated in the bloodstream in order to reach to the target tissue. There are two arteries to supply the oxygenated blood to the pituitary gland. These are named as superior hypophyseal artery and inferior hypophyseal artery. These two arteries are coming from the internal carotid artery. The inferior hypophyseal artery supplies mainly to the pars posterior part and the branches from these arteries are ending in capillary plexus and some of them are forming portal vessels also. 
the portal vessels formed in the pituitary gland these forms hypothalamo hypophyseal portal vessels actually these vessels are passing through the pituitary stalk in order to get connected with the hypothalamus the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary is connected by hypothalamo hypophyseal portal vessels the venous blood draining from the pituitary will be draining to the cavernous sinus mainly and to the neighboring venous sinuses dural venous sinuses the connection between hypothalamus and pituitary gland there are two connections hypothalamo hypophyseal portal vessels and hypothalamo hypophyseal neuronal tract these connections like hypothalamo hypophyseal portal vessels and neuronal tracts are connecting hypothalamus with anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary respectively and what you see here is hypothalamo hypophyseal portal vessels these are the this is the connection between hypothalamus and anterior pituitary so the stimulatory and inhibitory factors are passing through it in order to reach to the anterior pituitary tissue again behind the posterior pituitary gland and hypothalamus is connected by hypothalamo hypophyseal neuronal tract these tracts consist of bundles of axons in fact the soma or the cell bodies of these neurons are located in the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei of hypothalamus but their processes are passing through the pituitary stalk from the hypothalamus in order to reach below to the posterior pituitary so from these nuclei the processes are continuing downwards to the posterior pituitary gland this is called as hypothalamo hypophyseal neuronal tract so the hormones of posterior pituitary passes through this neuronal tract like oxytocin and vasopressin let us learn the embryology or developmental anatomy of the pituitary gland developmentally both anterior pituitary gland and posterior pituitary glands are separate entities because the anterior pituitary or the adenohypophysis is developed by the epithelium of the pharyngeal roof causes an outpocketing this outpocketing is called as rathkes pouch or hypophyseal pouch during further proliferation of this pouch that will get detached from the oropharyngeal region and that will get fully proliferated into anterior pituitary gland so here in these pictures it is obvious that from the roof of the pharyngeal region of the growing embryo there is a pocketing that is called as rathkes pouch or pharyngeal pouch and this rathkes pouch further after proliferation what is happening is it will get detached from the roof of oropharyngeal region so this is the roof of oropharyngeal region this is the detached portion further it will grow and multiply in order to form the adenohypophysis or the anterior pituitary gland the remnants of this rathkes pouch will be seen as the interglandular cleft in the pituitary gland similarly if you consider the development of neurohypophysis that is a downward proliferation or the growth from the developing brain that is from the diencephalon so the developing brain will grow downwards and this part will be the future posterior pituitary gland or also called as neurohypophysis further these two parts are come approximating each other and merges together to form the fully developed pituitary gland both adenohypophysis and neurohypophysis so adenohypophysis basically from the surface ectoderm and neurohypophysis is developed from the neurectoderm as a part of the developing brain so these are the points to be remembered about the embryology next we are entering to the histology of the pituitary gland cellular architecture of the pituitary gland in detail so here we will learn all the parts adenohypophysis neurohypophysis in detail so what you see here is adenohypophysis and neurohypophysis respectively all the cellular architecture we can consider it is obvious that cellular architecture is different so the anterior pituitary gland especially the pars distalis consists of various types of the cells 
basically there are two types of cells chromophiles and chromophobes chromophiles again can be categorized into acidophiles and basophiles acidophiles are taking acid stain and basophiles are taking basic stain remember these two types of cells both acidophiles and basophiles these are chromophiles because they can take the stain this is the reason because they have fine granules in their cytoplasm so the acidophiles cells of the anterior pituitary these types of cells consist of two categories so these are named based on what hormone they are releasing for an example somatotrophs somatotrophs are the cells of the anterior pituitary which are acidophiles these are secreting somatotrophic hormone or the growth hormone second variety is lactotrophs lactotrophs are also acidophiles which are located in the anterior pituitary gland these are secreting another hormone called as prolactin and the basophiles consist of certain group of cells these are also named based on what hormone they are releasing for an example corticotrophs which are releasing adrenocorticotrophic hormone thyrotrophs which are releasing thyroid stimulating hormone and gonadotrophs which are releasing follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating hormone is required in order to happen the spermatogenesis and oogenesis in order to liberate the hormone estrogen and luteinizing hormone also is required in order to liberate the progesterone that helps for the maturation of the corpus luteum that is why luteinizing hormone the pars tuberalis consists of some undifferentiated cells and the pars intermedia consists of colloid filled follicles and also trace amount of acidophiles and basophiles are also seen but very less in number this is the picture to show you this is a original histologically stained picture here you can see acidophiles which are pink in color taking acid stains and the basophiles which are hematoxylin stained violet in color and also chromophobes are very pale these cells are arranged in certain cord like pattern and in between the cords of these cells there are blood filled capillary sinusoids the hormones released from these cells are directly liberated to these blood filled sinusoids finally that will join to the dural venous sinuses and to the venous system of our body and also here in this picture it is obvious that the posterior pituitary gland the cellular architecture in fact this posterior pituitary consists of certain neuronal processes nerve endings axonal endings and these neuronal processes are supported by huge number of neuroglial cells these cells are called as pituitocytes so under ordinary histological staining technique we could see several nuclei all these nuclei the posterior pituitary gland secretes the hormones like oxytocin and vasopressin these are just stored in the posterior pituitary gland but synthesized in the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei of the hypothalamus this is a drawn picture to show you the histological features of the pituitary gland so here in the anterior pituitary area you could see all the chromophiles and chromophobes in the chromophiles you could see the pink stained cells called as acidophiles and hematoxylin stained cells are also seen these are called as basophilic cells and the white or pale cells are chromophobes and in between these groups of the cells you could see the sinusoids and what you see here is the cleft and also here this is the pars intermedia there you can see colloid filled vesicles multiple in number in between that also you could appreciate the presence of capillaries and what you see behind this is the posterior pituitary this is the posterior pituitary gland so here you could see multiple nuclei these are all nuclei of pituitocytes these are the supporting neuroglial cells and also you have the axonal processes and you can see here under capillaries also is clearly seen so this is how we have to
so this is an original historical slide diagram so here you could see parts distalis and all the acidophils and basophils everything is seen and also the venous sinusoids that's what you see here pars distalis again this is the cleft and again this is the pars intermedia so there you could see the colloid filled vesicles and also other cells the pars nervosa or the posterior pituitary consists of the nuclei of pituitaries and also the neuronal endings thank you for watching this video